Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Conditionals 4 of Part 1 from Module 1. Uh, one of the things that you're going to notice when you watch these videos is this part is going to be color-coded because I'm going through and changing those to read rather than just as formatted code to be formatted JavaScript code, which probably doesn't matter, but in case you notice the difference. And the other is, is that sometimes there'll be an extra line here, and I don't think that that looks good, so when you see it, it'll probably look like this. But that's not really going to change anything, just wanted to throw that out there. So we got a function called is odd. Is odd returns whether the given number is odd. So we discovered in the last question that we did that the modulus operator with two can tell us if numbers are even or odd. If a number modulo two is equal to zero, it's even. If a number modulo two is equal to one, it's odd. So we'll say if a if num is odd, num mod modulus 2 is equal to 1, return true, say otherwise, return false. So if num is odd, which is going to be if num modulus 2 is equal to 1, then we know the number is odd, thus this function should return true. Else, if a number is not odd, it's even return false. And again, we're probably going to assume that these are integers. Uh, these are going to come up a little bit with these introductory problems. We're not going to consider num being inputted as anything other than a number. And furthermore, we're probably not going to consider it as anything other than an integer. So you're not going to get like 4.89645 or something like that. Um, just keep in mind that edge cases are something we're going to introduce as we go, but for now they're not super important. So num modulus 2 equivalent to 1. We run the tests and we're in good shape. Is same length. Is same length returns whether the given words have the same length. So, if length of word 1 is equal to word 2, return true. Else, return false. So if we think about the code, we know we can use the length method on word 1. Although to be sure, this is actually a property. But the difference between a property and a method is not something that's super important for us now. Uh, mostly it has to do with whether or not what you're doing is a function or if it's just like a, uh, a static value. Um, not super important for us at this point, but still something you kind of want to have in the back of your mind. Or like, oh, properties, methods, values. Just kind of keep it all humming in there and we'll organize things as we keep moving through these problems. So if word1.length is equivalent to word2.length, then we return true, else we return false. So we scroll down, run the tests, we are correct. Are both odd? Given two numbers returns whether or not both of the given numbers are odd. So this is going to be the first time where our pseudocode is going to have more than just the if else in it. We're going to write a very specific and, and then that and is going to translate to code. Um, the siren in the background, if you can hear that I apologize, but if you can hear it, well, I'm not really sure what to say about that. So, if num1 is odd and num2 is odd, return, we're going to want 2 there, return true, else return false. So, if num1 is odd, so we'll say, actually there's a couple ways to do this, so we're going to do all of them. We'll say, mm, no, we'll just wrap it all in an if statement for right now. If num1 modulo 2 is equal to 1, then we know from this previous problem that this means that num1 is odd. And we use two ampersands, and that's a logical and operator. It means that in order for this condition to be true, this statement and whatever we end up putting here have to both be true, or else the entire thing is false. So num2 modulo 2 is equivalent to 1. If both of those are true, we're returning true. Else, we're going to return false. I don't know how to spell it right. Now that we have that, we run the tests and we're correct. So here's one thing that we could do instead. We could create two Boolean variables. First one is going to be num1 is odd. And we're going to assign that to this expression right here. Then we're going to say variable num2 is odd, 
and we're going to assign that to be the result of this expression right here. Now you want to keep in mind, what we're doing right now is not going to change the functionality of this, of this uh, function. It's not going to change what it does. All it's going to do is possibly give you a little bit cleaner idea of what's happening. The first thing we're doing is we're taking the first parameter, applying the modulus operator with 2, and checking to see if that's equivalent to 1. The result of that expression is that assigned to this num1 is odd variable, and the same thing is done for num2. We then check those Boolean variables, as opposed to the entire expression. But again, it does the exact same thing. These are just two ways of organizing your thoughts. We're in the tests, and we're still good. Is either even? So for this one, we're going to do that, uh, that expression that we just did. We'll say variable num1 is even is equal to num1 modulus 2 is equal to 0. Then we're going to check num2. Num2 is even is equal to num2 modulus 2 is equal to 0. Now we can write a little bit of pseudocode because you don't ever always have to write pseudocode and then code or code and then pseudocode. You can kind of, you know, mix and match them depending on what works best for you. So we'll say if num1 is even and num2 is even, return true. Otherwise, return false. So you might notice how the addition of these Boolean variables makes the pseudocode a little bit easier to parse. Instead of having to figure out that num1 is even represents this expression, or we should say that this expression represents that pseudocode, we can just grab this conveniently named variable. So we'll say if, I'll we'll back that up, and then else, and here if num1 is even and num2 is even, num1 is even, and num2 is even. And this is an example of that copy and pasting issue I was discussing earlier. It's not a good idea to copy and paste your if else statements for now. You want to get good practice writing those over and over again. But if you have a variable like num1 is even, you don't want to risk having to write that multiple times. So we copy and paste it. <clears throat> In the case that num1 is even and num2 is even, we have actually not been doing this problem correctly. So one of the most important things to remember is to read problems carefully. So this one is going to return whether or not either one of the numbers is even. So either one means or. So rather than and here, we want to use or. The or operator is these two vertical pipes. They're next to, or I should say they're above the return key on a MacOS operating system keyboard, and they're just above the backslash. So you're going to hold down shift and hit backslash, and that'll give you these pipes. Put two of them together, and that's an or statement. It means that this entire expression is going to return true if either this one or this one is true. Only when they're both false will this entire expression return false. So if num1 is even or num2 is even, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. So now that we've done that, we'll run our tests, and we're correct. So thanks for watching, y'all, and we'll see you in the next video.